Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a video for kids. So we're going to talk about working dogs, specifically service dogs and guide dogs and how to handle them when you see them in public. So I'm Adeline and this is my service dog in training, Ezio. He's 14 weeks old and currently trying to nap while mom's talking. So, let's get on to the service dogs and how to handle them in public. So, you probably do or do not see a bunch of service dog handlers in public. You may, it may be a rare site where you live, it may be a very occasional site, it may be a site that you see every day, depending on where you live. So, service dogs. What do they do? Service dogs are there to help a person with a disability. Not all disabilities are visible, but they are here to help us with our everyday lives. Kind of like when you guys go to school, your teachers are there to help them teach you about math and certain stuff like physical ed education, like gym time, that teaches your body to grow and get stronger. So service dogs are a little different from that, but um, service dogs, they help with such as a person with mobility issues. So that's issues with moving around, or a person in a wheelchair, um, or they they might just not be able to move their body as well as we can. Uh, so that means a mobility service dog would be there to help them. So some of the things that a mobility service dog would, would do would be pick up objects, uh, turn on a light switch, uh, help put laundry away, open doors, close doors, grab a drink from the fridge. Um, those are just a few things they can do. They can also help the person balance. Uh, so that's what a mobility dog is, and that's exactly what Ezio is going to be. He's going to be, that's half of what he's going to be be a mobility service dog and he's going to be a psychiatric service dog. So, so when you see these pups in public, what you want to do is practically nothing. You can look at them, but don't make eye contact with the puppy. Um, don't stare too long. People find that a little rude sometimes. But what's most important of what you don't do is you shouldn't offer food to the dog, don't yell, look a doggy, don't talk to the puppy, and don't pet him. That's especially important. You don't need, you want to not distract the puppy dog because the puppy dog has a very, very important job that if you distract the puppy dog, you could possibly really, really hurt the handler or the person who has the dog. It's, it's very dangerous to distract the puppy dog. The puppy dog has a very, very important job, uh, such as a seizure alert dog. If you distract them and the handler, the person who has the puppy dog, has a seizure, they don't, the, what, what a seizure alert service dog would do is 
is alert them before they have a seizure so they can get to a safe place where they can't injure themselves. So if you distract the puppy dog from alerting the handler, they could possibly have a seizure and injure themselves or worse. So this is why it's so important not to distract any type of working service dogs. And the service dog people will be very, very, very happy that you haven't distracted their puppy. You can ask, sometimes you can ask, not all handlers will say yes. You can ask if you can pet the puppy dog, but most handlers will probably say no as they are working. And it's very important you don't get upset about it. You have to say, okay, um, just tell them they have a very pretty dog or cute dog and end the conversation or stop there they'll probably say thank you and then you guys can go back on your way to doing your thing shopping or whatever you're doing it's very much appreciated if you do ignore the puppy dog so like I said not all service dog handlers will tell you no you can pet my puppy dog so again not distracting puppy dog service dogs uh, there's also not distracting seeing eye dogs, which are guide dogs, which is another type of service dog. So, especially because the person's blind, some people will try and sneak a pet or try to pat it and do things without the person knowing. And that's very dangerous as well because they depend on that puppy dog to see for them and guide them, right? So if they don't know where they're walking, they could possibly fall and hurt themselves. So it's also a good idea not to distract that one as well. And again, we all appreciate you ignoring the puppy dog. I know it's very exciting to see a puppy dog out in public, but it's very, very important not to distract the dog. Just remember that service dog handlers do not have to answer your questions so if you ask them about their disability or you ask them why they have the puppy dog they don't have to answer why they have the puppy dog they might not feel comfortable or they might not feel happy to answer you guys they won't be rude but it's sometimes embarrassing to talk about why they need the puppy dog. So what's really 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 important is that you don't pretend that your pet puppy dog is a service animal. It's important, it's very important that you don't take your pets into public areas that do not allow puppy dogs or other animals. It's very important you keep that up, them at home so they don't distract, disturb, or possibly attack the puppy dogs that are working. And the service dog handlers are very, very, very thankful for everyone who leaves their puppy dogs that are not service dog trained or guide dog trained at home. So when you see them and you get to talking to a handler that's comfortable with speaking to you, try not to feel sorry for them and try not to feel sorry for the puppy dog. The puppy dogs do love the work and they do get days off just like your parents or your grandma or uncle or aunt who work at their daily lives. They get days off, like a little weekend or a holiday, so there's no reason to feel sorry for the puppy dog. They have their days off. So 
here are some things that you may see a service dog wearing. See, Ezio is wearing his in-training vest. He's gonna model it for us. So his in-training vest says, ask the pet, he's in training. And on the back, it says service dog in training, ask the pet. Now, some people who have training do dogs in training may say service dog in training, do not pet, do not make eye contact, do not look at, or well, that's what no eye contact means is don't look at him. Uh, don't make kissy noises or Try and call him over, don't distract him. But for now, he's a really, really young puppy and he's still getting to learn about the public and some strangers and people. So right now, he, I feel the need that he can probably be pat as long as people ask to pet him. So when he's older and graduates, to becoming a full service dog, he will eventually wear this. This is just one of the harnesses, but until he gets bigger, I'll get him a new one. But this is going to be his adult one. So there's a bunch of stickers. Well, I guess they're like stickers, but they're kind of, they're patches. So it says service dog. So this one says, service dog, if handler is down, do not separate us. Do not call 911 unless injured. Give us space. So if there's a down handler on the ground because they fainted and the dog is either licking them or under their head or barking at them, they are doing their job, they're working, so don't shoo the puppy dog away. Let the dog work. And unless the handler is injured and bleeding, then call an ambulance. But please let the doggy do its job. So this one says not all disabilities are invisible. So that means not all disabled person people are in wheelchairs. They're not all holding a cane. They're not all in crutches. Some people look like a normal person walking around like you and I, and they don't see their disability and think, oh, they don't need a service dog. But that's not entirely true. So let's go on to the next one that says, ignore me, I'm working. So when it says ignore me, I'm working, Remember what we said, ignore the puppy dogs, try not to get their attention, right? That's very good that you don't. So on this side, I've lost some patches, I've took them off, but this side says service dog as well. And so does the handle. So this is kind of like what you see a guide dog wear, but this is also for guiding, sorry. In our faces. There we go. So he would wear this part, and I would hold this handle, and he can guide me away from crowds or guide me through crowds, should I say, and take me away from crowds and make me go sit down on a bench because I lose my balance quite easily, and sometimes I feel like I'm going to pass out. So that's some of the equipment you'll see a puppy dog wear for as a service dog. Right, buddy? Yeah. So this is also part of our puppy dog equipment. So this is called a gentle leader or a halter, like a horse wears. So this is a gentle leader and where it goes is it goes probably won't. So it goes over his nose like that and around his neck. So this part goes around his neck. Okay, so hang on. So this is his halter, as I like to call it because I used to have horsies. But it's also called a gentle leader. 
It just goes over his muzzle like that, just like a horse hawker would. And it goes around his neck as well. But it's not a muzzle, which is what some of you might see. So see, he can open his mouth completely. He doesn't like it when I do that, but he can open his mouth. He can eat with it. It's just to help train the puppy dog to walk in a heel position, which is directly beside me. So he should be walking directly beside me at all times, follow my body language, and either sit or stand calmly when I stop. So the halter is just an easier way to help train the dog to heal and not pull on the leash or walk in front of you. So those are some of the equipment that we, you will see a service or guide dog use. Other equipment that we use can be, these boots won't fit them, they never did. So these are boots, they're doggy boots, you'll see them on their paws, especially in the winter or the hotter weather, such as now, it's summer, so I've got a bigger pair for him, but I've got another bigger pair coming for him because you are growing so much. Yeah. So, with those, they help protect from the hot, hot pavement. Because our puppy dogs are working with us 24 seven and going out with us and everywhere, they need to protect their paws because their paws can get really burnt and melted if they walk on the hot pavement. It kind of hurts our bare feet to walk on hot, hot pavement from the sun burning on the pavement, so they need protection too. Other equipment you'll see, this isn't a service dog backpack, this is my other puppy dog's backpack, but this is part of the backpack, it goes on a harness. So you'll some, see some service dog handlers have a backpack on their puppy dogs, and they will probably have service dog right across there and they will probably have another patch on it somewhere on the dog that says medical equipment inside, medical card inside, information, anything that they need inside such as like diabetic stuff, um, sugar and stuff just to help with the diabetics and their low blood sugar and stuff like that. I'm not a diabetic so I'm not very familiar with it but just medical equipment like that, some medications and pills. But... Yeah. So service dogs don't even have to wear a vest like this, right? So to identify them anyway, they should be behaving like this and they should just like, they could be completely naked without any vest or sort of sticker on them that tells you it's a service dog or special equipment on it. So they should behave like this, completely calm and very responsive to the owner. They shouldn't be doing anything erratic, like barking or jumping up on people. They shouldn't be doing anything like that. They should, this is how you can identify them, their calm nature and their listening skills and their tasking, like picking up dropped objects for their owners. Good boy. So I gotta give him a treat now. So thank you for paying attention and thank you for watching our video. We really, really, really appreciate you guys listening to our videos and watching and hopefully following what we told you guys. So, and please feel free to educate your parents your aunts and uncles, your brothers and sisters, all about service dogs and how to handle them. It's very good that you help educate and teach people how to handle these dogs when you see them. So thank you and hope you guys have a really, 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 really good day. I gotta give him a cookie now. Okay, bye.